Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Jesper Offersen and today we are going to talk about uh, another sunscreen. Um, we are going to talk about a, a mineral sunscreen and we are going to talk about one from uh, the company CeraVe. So uh, this one here and as you can see it is an uh, SPF of uh, 30. So uh, as it is a mineral uh, sunscreen uh, usually they will give you some sort of a white cast on the face so uh, we will see how uh, strong that effect will be from uh, this product here and uh, if you're looking at another product like uh, for example the new one from uh, Neutrogena then uh, that one says it has a uh, zinc oxide at the level of 21.6% uh, percent, but that is an SPF of uh, 50. So um, this one here is an uh, SPF of uh, 30, so you would expect uh, less. And in this one here, uh, there is a titanium uh, dioxide, uh, 6% and zinc oxide of uh, 5%. So altogether, uh, for minerals uh, a lot less so that should in itself give a less severe cast on your face but also uh, obviously it gives a, a lower SPF. So uh, what do they say about uh, this product here? Well uh, they say on the front it is a lightweight one, it's a non-greasy feel and it has a three uh, essential uh, ceramides says down here uh, and then it contains a niacinamide. So a niacinamide is something that is really uh, good for your skin. It is a vitamin B3 in the uh, non-flushing form. So uh, what else does it say on the front? Well it says that it is a um, accepted by the uh, National Eczema uh, Association. So apparently if you have uh, eczema then it should be good for your skin. Now they say it is a uh, broad spectrum SPF 30 and then they say it is a uh, hydrating, it's a hydrating sunscreen and it says uh, up here. So what uh, makes this a uh, sunscreen uh, hydrating well uh, it contains a uh, glycerin and that is an old-fashioned uh, humectant and it contains uh, rather a lot because it is a uh, when you look at the package it is uh, the uh, second ingredient uh, after water so uh, a lot of uh, glycerin in it and uh, then uh, it also contains something else that should uh, hydrate your skin and that is a uh, sodium hyaluronate so uh, the salt of hyaluronic acid uh, and that should uh, kind of plump up your skin, keeps the moisture in your skin and uh, so on. Um, what else uh, is there in uh, the product that uh, you should maybe look out for? Uh, well, I would say when you are using a uh, mineral uh, sunscreen, that is usually because you don't want one of those that are uh, a chemical uh, sunscreen so you don't want all those uh, chemical filters and all that sort of stuff and a lot of uh, those uh, chemical filters they are based on uh, salicylic acid salicylic acid we know uh, now is a hormone disruptor and uh, all sort of uh, products that are derivatives of uh, salicylic acid uh, could be uh, expected to be hormone disruptors as well. So therefore, a lot of these uh, derivatives are tested by the EU at the moment uh, in order to find out if they are hormone disruptors. So that would be uh, sali uh, something that is a derivative of salicylic acid. So when you look at a, a mineral sunscreen, you don't really expect uh, that to be something in it that uh, could have sort of uh, the same effect. I don't say that it has the, the same effect, but I say that it could have the same effect because in this product here, there is actually a salicylic derivative and that is uh, something that is called butyl octyl salicylate. So uh, I have not been able to see that on the EU list that it is uh, under investigation for be a hormone disruptor, but uh, something like a hexyl salicylate, which you will find in a lot of uh, chemical sunscreens, is uh, under investigation for being a hormone disruptor. So we'll have to wait and see what the outcome of that will be. But just to say that uh, in this product here, there is actually a salicylic acid a derivative. So that is maybe something that you would not like and therefore maybe for that alone you would not uh, buy a product uh, like uh, this. So how uh, does it perform on the skin? Well um, let's have a look uh, let's see how white it makes your face look. So uh, does it have any sort of a perfume? No, uh, it doesn't have uh, any sort of a perfume and uh, it doesn't uh, list any sort of uh, perfumes uh, in uh, the stuff. So um, usually it just means that it has a sort of a chemical scent, kind of like a glue or something like that. 
Um, so how much uh, should be used? Well, uh, if I put it on my entire face, which I will do today, um, oh no, I will not do that because if I do that, then you cannot see the difference. Though I'm pretty sure it would be quite obvious that my face would become rather white. But I will put it on half of my face. I will only use kind of like half uh, half of half a teaspoon because half a teaspoon is what you need for your uh, entire face in order to get the SPF that is listed on uh, the product. So if we take a lump like this, um, that will kind of like be a, a quarter uh, of a teaspoon. And again, for sunscreens, rather use it too much than uh, too little because uh, the thing is that a lot of people, uh, they might uh, use it too little. So how does it feel uh, on my fingers? Well, it's not runny, but it is uh, not like a thick, thick cream. It's kind of like relatively like a normal sort of a cream. So we will put it uh, on this side here. And uh, yes, it is uh, very white to begin with, but all sort of uh, creams will come up uh, white before you are smearing them out. So will it continue to be uh, very uh, white? Well, um, let's uh, see. And does it annoy or does it, is it a problem in the beard area? Well, obviously it is because all sort of uh, mineral sunscreens are uh, an issue when you're going into the beard area. But uh, I mean, you need to go into the beard area because if you don't, well, you don't get any sort of uh, sun protection in this area here. And the beard alone will not be protection enough. So we go like that. And uh, how does it feel on the skin? Does it annoy my skin? Um, usually uh, when I have used uh, other mineral sunscreen, it seems like uh, titanium dioxide uh, could annoy my skin, uh, give this sort of a warming sensation on the skin. So um, uh, I tried it uh, the other day as well, and I, I can't really remember that it gave any sort of a warming uh, sensation. Um, so yeah, let's put it uh, on the eyelids as well. And obviously you should take care not to get it into your eyes. Um, this, um, compared to other creams, uh, I would say this starts to um, get uh, quickly very, um, a little bit more rigid, a, a bit more um, stiff or s drying up. Um, so it's not uh, as easy to work with as uh, maybe uh, other uh, sunscreens uh, are. So yes, uh, as you can see, uh, it makes uh, your face look uh, very uh, white. As the, how does it smell? It's not an overwhelmingly awful smell, but it is kind of like, uh, I don't know, chemical something. So um, yeah, like that. And um, as I have said uh, for other uh, mineral uh, sunscreens, the good thing about uh, mineral sunscreens, it is that um, you can easily see if you are putting an even layer on your skin. And as you can see, a lot of the stuff is uh, still on my hands. So um, if we just add something up here, um, it is so that with sunscreens, as I say, rather use it too much than uh, too little because a lot of the stuff will sink into your hands uh, as well. So yes, um, this now becomes uh, more difficult to smear out. Um, as you can see, when I'm smearing it out, it kind of like, um, it comes off and then uh, it um, leaves a thicker or a more concentrated amount here of the uh, the minerals. So now it is, um, um, it's, um, it's, it's actually a bit uh, difficult to uh, move around because what you don't want to do is that you don't want to really pull your skin when you're putting something like uh, this on. And in general, obviously, you don't want to uh, pull your skin. So uh, I would say this is a little bit more uh, difficult to uh, put on. It quickly becomes um, rigid, I would say. Um, yes, but obviously, yes, I could smear this out more and more and more. But you get, you can already see that uh, this stuff, it will leave uh, a wide uh, cast on your face. And a lot of the stuff I am taking off now uh, in this uh, cloth here. So uh, that means that I have actually less 
on my face that I actually uh, should have on. And that means that I will not get uh, the sun protection that uh, is listed on the box of uh, SPF 30. Because that means that I need to put uh, enough on my skin. Um, Again, as of what I've said in other videos, I think that people that find a product like this really nice and find that it doesn't leave a cast on their face, they are using way uh, too little, I'm pretty sure. And that um, will not give you the sort of sun protection that you are bargaining for. You will get uh, much uh, less. So yes, obviously this uh, looks uh, not uh, really nice. And uh, even that I smeared it out more and more and more, um, I mean, uh, this looks like I'm going to a, a carnival or something like that. Uh, and keep in mind, this is SPF of 30. I would not like to try this one if it was an SPF of 50, because there would be a lot more of these uh, minerals in uh, this stuff, and that would be absolutely unutterable. So uh, yes, this might be good if you are alone on the beach and then there's no one really uh, around you. and. Um, is it for me? No, it's definitely it's not for me. Uh, is it for you? Maybe if you have a very a white skin, you might uh, get away with it. But I think as soon as you don't have a very very uh, white uh, skin, uh, th this is not. This is definitely not something you you can use. And they they say it is a lightweight, non-greasy feel. Um, well, okay, it needs um, maybe a little bit more time to sink in, but you know, how long should I wait? Half an hour, two hours? Um, it should start to get much more or uh, less greasy uh, by now. And uh, 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 no, I mean, uh, uh, this this is this is greasy. Is it a, a lightweight cream? Uh, are we really, I mean, what do they compare with when they are stating a stuff like that? Margarine or something like that? I mean, this is like mayonnaise, perhaps. This is, um, I, 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 I don't know who this product uh, is for. Uh, would I be able to use a uh, foundation on top? I would not really think you should be, like, you can use a foundation on top. It will. Uh, well, I, I think this is a. I think the ideas behind these mineral sunscreens are really, really good, and it could be really nice if we could have a sunscreen that was not problematic in any way. Uh, but um, I think sometimes it is a choice between the two evils. Um, this is uh, not for me. Uh, so uh, yes, my verdict is that I cannot recommend this uh, product. I'm sorry, but uh, uh, I can't. So uh, yeah, if you would like to see more of these sort of videos, please subscribe, hit the bell, and do all those things you must do in order to be notified when I upload more of these sort of uh, videos. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye.